Switzerland has knocked the United States off top position. What accounts for Switzerland's rise up the competitiveness rankings to first position and the U.S.'s slide to sixth position? Those are two questions. Uh, first, on Switzerland, as you well know, Switzerland has always been one of our top performers. It is a country that has already been operating for many years at very high levels of efficiency. Uh, excellent institutions, uh, very well-developed uh, infrastructure. It has, uh, of course, a, a well-developed capacity for innovation, as you well know. Uh, Switzerland is actually one of the countries that has uh, some of the highest levels of uh, technical and scientific papers published in the world on a per capita basis. Uh, in addition, Switzerland has been improving, uh, making improvements in its macro framework. The budget deficit used to be a problem a few years back, but the authorities have actually moved to, to, to redress these problems. Um, in addition, as you noted, um, the United States has actually fallen a few places in the rankings. And this, of course, because it is an international comparative ranking, when a country falls, other countries rise automatically. In the case of the United States in particular, I think that much of the decline can actually be attributed to uh, developments on the macroeconomic framework. The United States has been running large budget deficits for many years. There has been, there has been a significant rise in public indebtedness. There are concerns in the international community about the impact of global imbalances. I think that these things are beginning to have an impact on the underlying ranking of the United States. However, it's still a top ten country, and I think that any kind of a competitiveness exercise that we do in coming years will necessarily reflect the many strengths of the U.S. economy, especially in the area of technology and innovation. In the Global, in the global Competitiveness Report, you interview Professors Rogoff and Cooper on the topic of global imbalances. How will this impact the U.S.'s competitiveness in the coming year? One of the reasons we wanted to, to have this interview in the Global Competitiveness Report is because, as you, as you will remember, during the last annual meeting in Davos, there was a lot of concern on the part of the business community about the impact for the global economy of growing imbalances. And growing imbalances is actually a code word for the United States, and in particular, its fiscal deficit and its current account deficit. Uh, now, a couple of things. What worries... Uh, business community and, and others, is that um, the current account deficit in the United States is the largest that it has ever been. We have had data you know, for going, going for more than 50 years, and basically in, terms, in dollar terms as well as in GDP terms, you know, it has never been as large as this. And so this is beginning to raise questions in the minds of many uh, CEOs of top uh, companies, um, who care deeply about you know, the dollar-euro exchange rate, who care deeply about the level of interest rates and what interest rates are likely to do in, in the next year or two. Uh, and so one of the questions that, that, that we try to look at in the, in, in the interview is basically, is, is this sustainable? In other words, how much longer can the U.S. run these deficits? It has already been doing it for the last 10, 15 years. And economists actually have been crying wolf you know, for the last 10, 15 years. And yet the U.S. economy seems to, seems to chug along quite well, you know, growing actually more quickly than Europe and Japan. Uh, and so there is this very active debate in the economics profession you know, as to whether, in fact, this can be sustained for a long time. And we, we interviewed Cooper, uh, Professors Cooper and Rogoff, not only because they are two of the leading economists in the world, uh, individuals with vast experience and very distinguished academic reputation, but also because they have a slightly different, different points of view on this particular issue. Professor Cooper thinks to, is of the view that the current account deficit, quite large, is actually quite sustainable because he argues that the United States economy is a, it has many, many important institutional strengths. It is still a country that attracts a great deal of savings from the rest of the world. You know, at the moment, we have roughly $5 trillion of savings outside of the United States in places like China and India and, and Russia and, you know, much of the emerging, emerging world. Professor Cooper asks himself the following question. Is it not reasonable to think that at least 20% of these savings, you know, for an economy which, after all, accounts for something like 25 or 30% of the global economy, 
would actually want to find their way into the United States, which is, after all, the center of technological innovation. It is a country that has you know, innovations in the area of high technology coming into the next 20 years, probably. So you would think that Sabre would wish to be present, at least to some extent, in the U.S. market. If you accept this, and it is a very powerful argument, then you, that 20 percent of $5 trillion, that is $1 trillion, which is already more than the current account deficit last year, which, which, which was very large. So his argument is that the chances that this, this, this deficit can be sustained for quite a number of years are actually quite high. Uh, Professor Rogoff, however, is considerably more worried. Um, he thinks that um, um, part of the, the deficit is being driven by um, the large fiscal uh, deficit of the U.S. The United States has been running large fiscal deficits for many years, actually for the last six years consecutively. Public debt levels have been rising quite quickly. Um, the, uh, there, there is uh, uh, this very rapid accumulation of dollar assets in the central banks of uh, Japan and China and India and Russia and Brazil and Mexico and many other parts. Um, if there were to be some kind of shock to the global economy, which might lead investors and holders of, do of, do of dollar assets you know, to take a view as to the future evolution of the dollar, it is quite conceivable that we could have instability in the foreign exchange markets, uh, that the U.S. authorities might have to increase interest rates significantly to defend the dollar, and then this would have ramifications for the, for the, for the recovery and for the strength of economic activity. Uh, I guess what Professor Rogoff would be saying is that uh, Large global imbalances introduce an element of vulnerability in the global economy, you know, which is a source of concern. And so I, I think that uh, it's difficult to disagree with that as well. So uh, I would certainly urge people to read this, this interview because there is a great deal of insight uh, into this particular issue. To come back to your original question, what does this imply for the U.S.? Well, it seems to me that if these uh, imbalances continue, as they have in the last few years, if there is no serious attempt to actually address them and redress them, then there is a very distinct possibility that, that the, the U.S. could continue to drop in the, in the rankings. Uh, at least the way we measure competitiveness, we give some weight to the evolution of macro indicators. If they deteriorate, if they deteriorate other things being equal, the ranking would fall. I must remind you, our index is a blend of hard data and survey data, and many, all of the all indicators that we use to assess the macroeconomic 